Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 163 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. His name is Elvis. And her name is Barbara. (laughs) How's it going? Oh man, it is going good. I've had a great week. How about yourself? Good. Episode 163, I thought I'd throw a a curveball because you always say my name is Elvis. But it is. I Isn't know. It? Still? Yes. yes. Just kidding. You just do it the same time every single episode. I don't know how you do it. I've only done it once. I just replay it every <laughs> time. All I have to do is say the episode number. It's really quite convenient. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> Delete. So it's official. The podcast is finally getting back on the road and going live again. Oh my God. I cannot wait. I am so excited. Dun, dun, dun. And I don't really have to go far at all. No, because we're going to be in your home state. <laughs> right on. So for over a year of being homebound and only doing remote recordings, like we mentioned, we're going to be at the Florida Dental Lab Association or the FDLA, their symposium, which is June 11th to the 12th at the Renaissance Orlando Resort at SeaWorld. Oh, yeah. Too much fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's been a while. And because of my fantastic new job at the Preet Corporation, we're going to be recording at their booth. And it's going to be live, live. Live, live, live. Not <laughs> not, not live, but live, live. <laughs> I know how much you love saying that. <laughs> so if you're going to go to the FDLA, make sure you stop by the Preet booth, sit down with us, and record. And if you're interested in also learning more about how Preet can help your lab succeed... I'm happy to have that conversation with you on or off the podcast. Sweet. Look at you. You're working and working. I'm working and double working. Yep. (laughs) Very impressive. But unfortunately, this episode, we were not live live. We were live not live. Because we are back. I don't get to say it very often. We are back in the Lone Star State. So last March, the Dental Lab Association of Texas, or the DLAT, had the first in-person meeting of the year. Now, while Barb and I couldn't be there, about 200 people did show up, which is a fantastic turnout for a time when most of the world was still not traveling. Heck yeah. Like us. Yeah. But just because we couldn't be there doesn't mean we couldn't be there. So continuing from last week's episode, we bring you more live, not live, (laughs) No. Live, not live. I don't know why that cracks me up today. Okay, sorry. It's great. Yeah, it's going to be the next (laughs) t-shirt. Live, not live, conversations from the Argon booth. So first up, we talk to lab owner from Waco, Texas, Tim Frizzle, who talks about some of the interesting things he saw at the show. Then we talk to Jane Rainey from Pure Air Living. She comes on to talk about her mission in life to clean the air in all the labs. And then a good friend and multiple podcast guest, Bennett Napier from the NADL, sits down with us to give us a quick update on the industry. And then we end the whole DLAT conference talking to the star of the show himself, Keith Wilson from Oregon. He talks about the old days of being a rep and how his passion for the industry still lives on. Great conversations from great people from a great show. So join us live, not live. I got in as many as I could, Barb. <laughs> From the Argon booth at the DLAT conference. Whitmix brings you one of the most exciting things on the market today, the patient. Yes, it's true. The one missing component in any case we do is the patient. But now you can change that. Whitmix introduces the Bellus 3D Dental Pro Face Scanning Solution. This new, practical addition to dentistry provides the dentist with a fast, easy, and affordable way to capture a detailed 3D facial scan, and it allows the laboratory an intelligent way to create a smile design. With this app, complete a 3D facial and even whole head scan can even be captured for virtual model and articulator alignment, which is pretty cool. You can now put a face to your digital workflow with the Bellis 3D Dental Pro. Learn more about this sought-after product by calling Lorena Lightheart 
at 970-218-9101 or emailing her at lightheart at whitmix.com. And be sure to watch Lee Colt presenting a Whitmix webinar entitled Bellus 3D Dental Pro, Creating the Virtual Patient. You can find that at whitmix.com forward slash webinars. We appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. Hey, Elvis, Barbara. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Fantastic. Well. Okay, I have a young man here that I think I've known him since tech school. Hmm. Maybe, I'm not sure. Early but anyway, he's got about 10 or 15 minutes. This is Tim from uh, Waco, Texas. He's a, got a removable lab. Ah, so awesome. uh, he's been involved with the association for many years, tries to come to all the meetings, and we're happy to have him here again. So I'm going to turn it over to to you guys and enjoy the time. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, Keith. How are you, Tim? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Well, what's your last name? Frenzel. Frenzel. Frenzel with an F R E N Z E L. Frenzel. Frenzel. Like it. From Waco, Texas. How are you, sir? Yeah. Sound like Elvis. Oh, my God. How are you? I'm good, Barbara. Thank you. So, what are you doing at the Texas show? At the Texas show, well, we've been, of course, keeping up with the technology, yeah. uh, looking at all the, the changes, and we've been looking at printers and mills and seeing where everything, what's the best to get. For our, our production. So, Tim, he said you're a removable lab. How has your uh, life changed in terms of technology? Are you guys, you know, you said you were looking at some of them. Are you using any printers or anything now? Yes, we're using a printer. We're printing, actually doing some wax, well, not wax triands, but they're printed out of a, an inexpensive material for a triand. We're printing models. <laughs> We have done a few, we've printed a few night guards, Okay. but I haven't, haven't received great reviews mm. from the doctors on those. Yeah. I think milling them are, is actually better for us. What issue are you having? Fit? Breaking? I think the material that we printed them out of had a, had a blue tint to it. They didn't care for the color or the feel. Hmm. We've been doing a processed clear acrylic for years yeah. and it, something something different and i don't think they were willing to change you know yeah it's just a little blue give it time soon it'll be black mm -hmm. and green so it doesn't oh matter. yeah <laughs> <laughs> how many techs do you have there let's see there's about eight technicians working wow. there we're also a fixed lab we're doing a lot of zirconia crowns and we do the all on fours and the, oh, wow. the zirconia hybrids. Wow. We're uh, designing the titanium bars for the all on fours and then wrapping acrylic and teeth around them. Mm. That sounds like it's a huge business in Texas. The all on four business? Yeah. Yes, I think, it, I think it's very successful. Uh, yeah, it's we talk a, to a lot of people in Texas that do a lot of those things. It's. Must be all that oil money or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess. I'm not sure. I tell you. <laughs> when I first learned the technique and I thought, well, we may do two or three of these a year in Waco. It's not that big a town. And oh, my gosh, I think I did 60 that first year. Wow. And we're, we're up probably over 100, 125, 130 a year right now. Wow. That's a ton. And not all of the labs are able to give support to those doctors and surgeons. And so we get called into Austin and Georgetown areas, hmm. areas, you know, 30, 40 miles away from Waco. Wow. Are you the one that does the conversions? I am one of three who do wow. the conversion. So there's eight employees and three of you do conversions? Uh-huh. Wow. We're not all doing them at the same time. Sure. Uh, well, like Thursday before the meeting, we had two technicians out doing conversions. Myself, and a, I was in Waco, and another one was down in Belton, mm -hmm. just south of Temple. That's awesome. That's huge. Yeah. 
I have way more than eight people here, and only one person does conversions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Where are you, Elvis? Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis. Okay. Yeah. And I'm in Florida, and it's 93 today, guys. I keep oh, saying that. bless you. Because Elvis is freezing, a, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a beach day, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> I took a half day yesterday just to lay out in the sun because I knew I was working all day uh, today. Yeah. So, yeah, us Florida people, we like it. Where are you in Florida? Uh, right on the West Coast and just west of Tampa. Oh, okay. We're right on the coast. And Clearwater is actually where oh. I'm at. Oh, I've been to Clearwater. Really? Many years ago, right. I stayed at the, the Bon Air in Clearwater, I think it was. Oh, yeah. I, I'm familiar with that. I love that area. That That is the most beautiful part of Florida, I think. Oh, yeah. That West Coast. So let's go back to, uh, I have a question for you. When you're doing the conversions and everything in office, how has your life changed this past year, dealing with patients and the COVID and, and everything like that? Uh, we, we did have a, I guess in... April, when things shut down, we went from eight technicians and I don't know, we probably had seven other support staff. We lost everybody except for three technicians and a receptionist who also acted as a delivery driver. Mm. So we went from 16 to four. And uh, when the doctors came back in May, I think it was around the middle of May when most of them came back, well, we were able to bring a few back. And anyway, we're back up. We've got all our technicians back now. And uh, business has been pretty good. It's, it's picked up a lot. In April and May, our sales were cut down 50, about 50%. And, of course, you know, your labor is about the only expense that you can control. Yeah. And so we had to lay them off. And fortunately, uh, the government was helping supplement unemployment. Yeah. And so when I was ready to call them back, I had a few technicians who didn't want to come back because they were making more money. Same yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, also. that happened to yeah. us. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. but they're all back now and working, and we've had a slow, let's see, February, we had the big ice storm here, so we lost a week of production in February. Everything's, I don't know, trying to catch back up and kick back into some sort of normalcy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did you guys lose power that week? I saw all sorts of stuff online. Yeah. I lost power at my home. We never lost power at the lab. We were out of uh, electricity for three days at home. Wow. We moved in with relatives, and uh, I kept checking the water lines and the air, I mean, the heat and everything Mm -hmm. at the lab to make sure we were doing okay. But we were very blessed and didn't have any trouble there. Good. That's fantastic. I saw people that they had to move into their lab. (laughs) <laughs> really? because their home lost power but the lab didn't yeah we started to do that i thought ah my brother-in-law's got bedrooms he's not using yeah. <laughs> i didn't want to move furniture into the lab you already live yeah. at the lab you don't want to live at the lab exactly exactly <laughs> interesting so what's some cool things you're seeing at the show it's piquing your interest well, I tell you, I don't, I don't know if you want me to call name brands or anything. Go for it. I saw an Envision Tech printer that I was really impressed with. Yeah. The materials, the materials they have look awesome to me. It seems like they're on the cutting edge of that part of the technology. They're doing real good with their materials. I'm excited for their model resin that doesn't need alcohol. Yeah, that's interesting. The water water based. Yeah. Is that what, yeah. Or rinse it with water. Yeah. I think that sounded interesting to me too. I'm super excited about that. Have you seen any of it or have you worked with it? Yet? I haven't worked with I it, but not. we talked to Al Sablani, CEO was on the podcast a couple of months ago and he was talking uh-huh. about it and it just really piqued my interest. Hmm. I don't know. It's one less chemical you have to work with. You or know, buy. I, I mean, yeah. alcohol is expensive right now. It is, and you can't always find it. No, it was hard for a while. <laughs> yeah, everybody was using it for hand sanitizer, yep. I guess. Yep. <laughs> but uh, we found where you could get it on Amazon, pretty good price, and we ordered four gallons of it. But uh, It's still 80 bucks, 80 $100, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Where water, you know, yeah. <laughs> you can afford that. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested to see how that works. 
Now, is, are they going to have that available soon for their other resins too? Well, I don't know. To me, that would be what I would be working on for all of them. <laughs> but I don't yes. understand the science of it, so I really don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. well. If you could have a printer that needs no alcohol and no light cure, I'd be sold. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. So what else do you see in there at the show? They've got the new scanners for um, three shape. That's what I'm trying to say. Three All shape. these things. Yeah. What yeah, new they, scanner? What do they have now? Well, it's, it, I say it's new. It's new to me. It's the E4 okay. scanner. Hmm. And uh, we were looking at getting another design station, and I wasn't sure if I needed a, a, a new scan station as hmm. well. But. Is that one of the open scanners? Yes. Yeah, yes. we just got one. It's nice. Really? It's nice. It? For the longest time, we used two box scanners from Three Shape, uh, and one was really old. But man, we got this thing. It's so fast. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Is it? It's unbelievable. I'm working with the 800 at the lab. Wow, that is an old one. So wow. That is an old one. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's still pretty accurate, and it's not that slow, but. Uh, mm. It depends on your know. production, you know. Speed yeah. is not always an issue. Yeah. What really sold me was using it for articulated cases. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to convert them to the uh, disposable articulator hinges anymore. You can stick that whole big thing in there. Oh, that's nice. That's super that's nice. nice. Yeah. Are you having to still use the little putty that they use oh, to yeah. stick them in there? Oh, yeah. How does that work with your articulators? Is it? It's good. Well, there's like a, it's hard to describe. It's almost like a cardboard foldout that holds big adjustable articulators. Mm. So you don't uh, use putty on that. I mean, it just kind of lays in there sideways to scan the bite. But okay. when it comes to just your, you know, your silver hinge articulators, you just use a lot uh, of putty <laughs> and it yeah. holds it in there. Yeah. yeah. We expected it to fall off. I just told the guy, don't scrape the thing. It's brand new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wish there was a better way to, to hold those yeah. on there. Yeah, putty and rubber okay. bands. You know, you got all this yeah. technology, but you still use Play-Doh Good and old rubber, rubber bands. bands. <laughs> we That's use fun. that. Everybody yeah. does. It doesn't matter yeah. how great a technology it is. You yeah. still need the yeah. rubber bands. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can buy them from Three Shape for four hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> a month. Four hundred dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, did you uh, check out any of the speakers this weekend? Yes, I did. I've listened to Miss Braswell. Oh yeah, she's oh great. she's great. She does a good job. Oh yeah. In fact, there's a clinic that's fixing to start. Uh oh. Where they're going to stain some or show us the stains of uh, zirconia. And oh, that'll be fun. Different hybrids doing the paint. Oh, yeah. Is it Mio? Uh, Abel Fernandez with Lazier. Mm. Lazier. An artistic canvas for changing seasons. That nice. sounds interesting. Uh, I haven't seen that Lazier before. Hmm. Are you guys familiar with that? No, I am not. Anyway, I thought I'd look into that. Cool. I guess their stuff comes from Germany, <laughs> a lot of their materials and all. Interesting. I just love new stuff. It's so much fun to go to those meetings and check out all that new it stuff. It is. You're the camaraderie of all your fellow technicians. Yep. And labs. I know. Labs. Did you go to the party last night? Oh, yeah. How That's was it? Country, good old country music, Texas country. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It, it was fun. Yeah. yeah. And then a little nice little dinner and some brewskis and yeah there you it go. was fun yeah, it was a good time it's nice. a late night good yeah. for you god those are what i miss the most mm -hmm. i know i tell you what you can learn more there oh and yeah catch up not more but as much as going to the meeting oh for you sure know? you get pointers and tips to handle a problem case or something the just coming to the meeting's great it's all the camaraderie is wonderful yeah it's so great to see it all anyway. starting back up again. Yeah. And yep. we wish we were there. I know. I hated that they met. I was hoping Chicago was going to have their big meeting this year. Yeah. But, uh, that's always a fun one to go to. Yeah. But, you know, if they did have it and it was only a tenth of the people, would it still be the same thing? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I see why they skipped. Yeah. I'm so ready for all this to be over with. We're still wearing yeah. masks here. Yeah. Uh, 
they've got it to where we don't have to have it wear them in the meeting rooms, but uh, anything in the hallways or socially. Sure. I hear you guys have the government in the hotel, so you got to be careful. Oh yeah, famous <laughs> here. <I'm> exactly right. <laughs> we gotta watch our p's and q's. Oh yeah. Well, Tim, we appreciate you sitting down with well, us, man. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I, I had a lot to offer, but no, it was yeah, fun talking with you guys. You did. Now go That's learn right. about Zirconia stains. I will. Stuff, man. I will. <laughs> you guys, I appreciate what y'all are doing for the industry. Oh, thank no, you. We appreciate you. you. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thanks, Tim. Elvis, I'm back. Yes, sir. Anyway, I do have a person lined up. They're finishing a little short conversation. So, uh, good. anyway, so how are you guys doing? Doing well. Good, thank you. I've got this young lady here that I've known for a couple of years. And uh, she's, um, I'll introduce you to her. It's uh, Jan Rainey. And here you go, Jan, sit right here. Okay, thank this, you. This is a conversation with Elvis and Barbara. Hello. Hi, Elvis. Hi, Barbara. Hello. Hello. Did you say it was Jan? Yes, Jan Rainey. Jan Rainey. Like like a rainy day? Like a rainy day. Awesome. What a great name. <laughs> I've never seen that name. That's great. Uh, yes. I'm happy to be here to be a part of your podcast. Yeah. Thanks for sitting down. Uh-huh. Thank you. What do you do? What sort of technician are you? Well, you know, I, uh, I started my career early in 79, and had a seven-year apprenticeship with a, a known laboratory. Back then, it was Great Southwest Dental Laboratory, part of the Stern Empire. Wow. And, yeah, and um, set my sights on, um, just knew that I was going to open the laboratory. Yeah. And I said, seven years. I'm going to do it in seven years. <laughs> and so I started my lab in seven years in 1986. Mm. And uh, a Crown and Bridge Dental Laboratory in Dallas, Texas. High-end cosmetic dental lab. And never looked back and enjoyed it every step of the way. Uh, had opportunity of working with some phenomenal people, Ed Flockins and Jerry Mariocker and oh, wow. oh, yeah. Verna Groats. Yeah. Wow. And you know, Verna Groats and Lanny Stevens who you know, Felix Pages. Oh yeah. A member of the uh, international group Art and Experience with Claude Sieber. Claude Sieber's my mentor. Wow. And was part of early on development, research and development with some of the Vita porcelains. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a wonderful opportunity to go to Zurich and participate. The Art and Experience Group did. Wow. And it was very fun. It was a lot of fun. So it sounds to me like you're a ceramist. National Board Certified Dental Ceramist. Um, yeah, but owned and operated the originally it was Spectrum Dental Prosthetics. And then I changed the name to SmileQuest Studio. Wow. Uh, later on and yeah so it's been a wonderful long-standing career in dental health care and I continue to this day you know the industry has changed so much I think a lot of people have had the opportunity over the years sitting at the bench you know we have all the time in the world to think about uh, anything that we want to think about oh yeah <laughs> sometimes too much time to think <laughs> yeah. right but you know what I learned I learned early on that I can visualize creative visualization being able to you know, visualize being on the beach and seeing the ocean waves touch this, the shore. And just, you know, I, I could take little, you know, virtual vacations mm -hmm. and oftentimes did that. And I always knew that if I was, you know, if I was focusing on the quality of work that I was doing and turning out a, you know, a wonderful product, then, you know, my phone would not be ringing, you know, <laughs> with, you know, complaints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... So you opened your lab in the early 80s? 1986. 86, so about mid-80s. Mm -hmm. And yes. you were fixed, still fixed only now? Fixed crown and bridge. You know, actually, I currently I retired in 2015 in medical device manufacturing. But prior to my retiring from the actual manufacturing process, owning and operating the laboratory, mm -hmm. you know, in 2010, you know, I had conducted a lot of research you know, over the many years that I've been in this industry and yeah. very passionate about it. I mean, you know, dental laboratory technicians, we have contributed so much to the health and well-being of, a, of all the patients that we've served in this nation. And, you know, there is an enormous amount of gratitude that I have for seeing people's lives change, you know. Sure. Even though we, 
was focused, you know, the word cosmetic procedure. For me, it was just always doing the best job that I could do. And I trained my technicians and to, you know, be, they were all cross trained. Mm -hmm. And as well, there were a number of people that I did train that went on to open up their own dental laboratories. And that was a very rewarding experience, Yeah, you know, to see them be successful. And in 20, well, actually in 2000, you know, I was doing a lot of research. I think after 9-11 was our first real economic downturn in the dental industry. I mean, that's when things and consciousness was raised and people really started thinking about what's going on, holding on to the, the dollar. I mean, I know a lot of cosmetic procedures, since it's not covered by traditional dental insurance, mm-hmm. um, dental insurance is not designed for, you know, restorative the products that the dental laboratories make. Yeah. So cosmetic dentistry, you know, came in full-fledged and I conducted a lot of research and in 2000, our nation was in the midst of a silent epidemic, and in 2003, a full-blown oral health epidemic, and I was shocked. Yeah. I, could, I just didn't believe it, you know. So I, you know, really took that very seriously and furthered the research, and in 2010, I thought the writing was on the wall for me. I said, you know, what am I going to do? I, I refuse to send my products overseas. You know, I'm just just not going to participate in offshore outsourcing. Good. Um, yeah. And did not do that, and... And then I'm like, but, you know, then I'm with, you know, <laughs> the competition. It was just interesting. Yeah. So I decided to start a nonprofit organization to address the national call to action regarding access to dental care. And so mm. in 2010, I committed. And in 2011, started the process. And in 2012, we got our award letter. And wow. we've been waiting for the right timing to uh, bring forth that organization to support products and manufacturers and getting our products to, you know, the patients who need them. So that's, that's a work in progress. Sounds like good work though. Yeah. How do you do that? Can you explain a little bit? Is there any way that uh, we can help or promote it or? Well, you know what, there'll be a time when we can, you know, further that conversation when we're ready to really engage currently right now, there's a lot of politics in that. If you can only imagine a lot of layers of efficacy, and yeah. as a nonprofit organization, you know, no one owns a nonprofit organization. It is the community. It's the people who support it. And timing is everything. And I continued my research. And as with COVID-19 and how it's affected all of our lives, it's more important now than ever to have a program like this because the economic downturn and crisis chain that has affected the industry as well as patients, I mean, and people. Yeah. It's dire straits. And... What I did right when COVID hit, you know, I probably you know, we all were faced with, you know, a lot of decisions and a lot of choices to make mm-hmm. and looking and forecasting and thinking about what our futures are going to look like. I um, had some air filtration systems in my home and was very concerned about the air quality and especially when they shut down the dental industry, not yeah. seeing it as a medical necessity. And I took it very seriously, as so many people did. And so I developed a relationship with company and here in Dallas, Active Pure Technologies, and we're a master uh, distributor and for the USA. And we're currently right now promoting their NASA certified space technology, Active Pure, which is a world patent protected technology that is changing indoor spaces with, in regards to indoor air quality. Huh. And so, yeah, so pureairliving.com is uh, the website, yeah. and you'll be able to find a wealth of information there. We're here participating at the Dental Lab Association of Texas annual conference, and it's been really great. I've been putting on a regulatory standard course entitled Indoor Air Quality and Occupational Health and how it is affecting our health and manufacturing. And we're a lot of particulate matter that compounds daily in the process and workflow that we do to manufacture the medical devices. And considering all the chemicals, this technology actually has been tested, FDA t- tested in, in CDC military laboratories and reduces, eliminates SARS-CoV-2 within three minutes inside hmm. the dental laboratories wow. or inside any space for that matter. Wow. Yes. So we um, are working right now to touch as many manufacturers in the dental industry and raise the conscious awareness that, you know, indoor air quality is a real issue. It's a real problem. And the outdoor-indoor air continuum is constant. We don't see it, but it's happening. And the effects on the human body is a term called body burden. 
and the bioaccumulation of all these chemicals and compounds and particulate matter PM2.5 is a health concern. And so much so that the CDC has stated that, you know, we have a, a public health emergency regarding air quality and the effects on indoor air quality. You're making so, me want to continue to wear a mask forever. <laughs> no, I think that wearing the mask is a protective measure, but N95 is a yeah. is the proper mask to wear, uh-huh. yeah. not just a face covering. Huh. You said earlier that you retired. It doesn't sound like you retired. <laughs> yeah, not at all. I retired from owning a dental. I mean, I own the dental laboratory still, and I, you know, I keep my hours and keep everything in place. But I'm not actually manufacturing <laughs> any longer. <laughs> wow. oh, but I love my Absolutely. career. I think the part that I most enjoy is changing people's lives oh I mean, sure yeah. Oh, yeah absolutely i mean and i loved you know just having that quiet time i mean as i was stating earlier you can think about whatever you want to think about yeah yeah it's our choice so your lab is still chugging along who's running it now is it someone no no i closed my oh, laboratory you closed it oh i did yeah you didn't even sell it you just closed the doors i did yeah. i closed the doors well good for you I had a group of practitioners that were selling their businesses to other practitioners. Sure. And as you know, the dental service organizations have come in and bought a lot of dental practices and changed yeah. the face of how we practice dentistry. And and it meets the needs of some, but there's still this upper echelon group of knowledge and ex- expertise and experience through the manual processing that is, you know, I mean, it dates back over 5,000 years ago, the, the processing and procedures, you know, through lost wax casting that we actually perform daily, Mm -hmm. you know. So it's just a different world, you know. It's Our world is changing very fast. Yeah. Agree. So did you have air purifiers in your lab? Well, you know, actually all the benches, you know, vacuum units. Suction units, yeah. Suction units. And we had, you know, of course, our sandblaster and the vena hoods. Yeah. And we maintained all that on a regular schedule. And, you know, we wore, you know, a mask at the sandblaster. That's kind of how we were taught. Sure. And n- never wore a mask on a regular basis while working at the bench. Yeah. So I did not have an air purifier in my laboratory. We did wipe down all the time and always were changing the air filters. And so there's a difference between air filtration and air purification. Hmm. Huh. Are you familiar? No. No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, most aren't because we've been just become so comfortable and rely upon our HVAC systems. Yeah, there's a filter in there. What else do you need? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) You know, safe place, you know, home or business, either way. But in reality, you know, there's two types of filtration or purification. One is called passive filtration where the air passes, you know, has to reach the actual unit to pull the air from the back of the unit through the filter where the particulate matter is captured Mm -hmm. and then it releases the air out the front of the unit and then there's an active purification which is active pure technology which actually is producing negative and positive ions that are dispersed from the unit the minute it's turned on at a thousand feet a second Mm -hmm. and these negative and positive ions are going out into the space seeking to ravish positively charged atoms that are the RNA and DNA viruses. And so they natural attraction, the active pure takes the hydrogen and oxygen from the air and produces H2O2 and attaches itself to the outer membrane, a process called lysis and eliminates the outer membrane and then exposes the pathogen on the inside and carries on to further take out the pathogen, killing it. Wow. wow. And so it's serious technology. And I can say that we're happy to say that Dr. Deborah Burks, whom we all know, has joined the parent company as their chief scientist and medical advisor. Wow. Wow. So we're excited. Yeah. What's the name of these things again? Sounds fascinating. Pure Air Living. You can go to pureairliving.com. Interesting. Yes. Well, that's cool. I'm glad to hear that this company is getting into our space with someone behind it that spent time in our space to understand it. Yeah. 
Agree. I am the founder of Pure Air Living, and we are currently right now working diligently inside the dental industry with Dental Product Report and some other, you know, Evo 820, Tourism, and we're just, you know, working together to get the word out that we're here to make a difference in indoor air quality. Nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for joining us. I can't wait till uh, this podcast goes live because I think there's going to be a lot of interest in it for sure. If there's, I'm sure there is already. Yes. Thank you very much. Is there an opportunity for me to hear it before it goes live? Of course. Sure. Just make sure awesome. you give Keith your email. It's Jan at pureairliving.com. Well, thank you, Janet, for coming on and talking to us. Thank you, Miss Rainey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, in fact, you know what, and how Active Pure works is that after a rainstorm like Mother Nature intended, you know, that's what's produced is H2O2. You have the rain, the hydrogen, and you have the oxygen that is combined, and then the lightning, and that's why it always smells so wonderful after a rainstorm. So, But I will tell you that our products do not have ozone, which is wonderful because that's not the most healthiest, Sure, you know, to have ozone in your space. So. Yes. Agree. Well, I appreciate you all. Yeah, thank you so thank much, you. Uh, Barb and Elvis. Appreciate it's you. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. I shall. I will do so. And y'all have fun. Thank <laughs> Thanks. you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Talk to you soon. Everybody's got a great accent. I know. I like her. She was awesome. I want an accent. <laughs> y'all, I have to find Keith. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We got Bennett here. Oh, oh my God. God! It's Bennett. Yeah, it's Hello, Bennett. Bennett. How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> What's happening? Much. Oh, yeah. Hey, I heard your lecture was awesome this morning. State of the industry. So, yeah, I think yeah, it was good. Good interaction. Good Q and A. I hear it was positive. The state of our yeah. industry, which is always good to hear. Yeah. Well, I made I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Shine it up before you tell us, Bennett. You tell them what they want to hear. <laughs> yeah, well, we heard the removable uh, techs are making a lot more money. Well, it looks that way. Do you want to? Do you want to capture a few minutes? I know you've talked to Marlon about the meeting and stuff like that. Anything yeah. you want to cover as far as the first live meeting back in a year? What's it feel like? Yeah, what's it, what's like? it feel like to Give be it out and about? Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's it's pretty good. I mean, this is a good test run for the rest of the year, and been impressed with DLAT. They've and the hotel has done a great job as far as the protocols and. Although a lot of people have had their vaccines, people are still being, you know, pretty safe and respecting social distancing. And um, people are finding their ways to get that personal interaction back. So yeah. that's been really nice to see that. And there's, um, I think, you know, take a few meetings for people to kind of get back to where we used to be. But it's this is a really good good meeting in the context of it's very personal anyway. A lot of people know each other. And so it's kind of like old home week. And yeah. people were uh, happy to be able to see each other. And um, it's been a good meeting so far. Nice. Yeah, well, they've been standing firm. They had their uh, meeting in October, and then they yes. said they were going to have it again in uh, March. And Cade, we talked to Cade earlier, and he said the turnout's been amazing. So yeah. I know uh, for myself and you, I cannot wait. We are like uh, two weeks away from Visions, and so it's right. just a really exciting time to be back and going. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I, I, one thing I like with this meeting, other groups are obviously considering it or doing it, but, I mean, just like example here with the VA, the VA's got a big – dental lab in dallas yeah so they have 50 of their staff participated in the meeting through live streaming so um you know just there's uh ways to get the uh continuing education and um whether it's in person or virtual or a little bit of both and um so it's, it's just nice to see the engagement got a quite a few uh, out-of-state folks just because they wanted to get to an you know in-person meeting so uh, that's also been interesting to see that so that's great that so are you here the whole day? Are you uh, leaving tonight? Or? Yeah, I'll go back today. Yeah, I had a good chance. Uh, Ricky was the keynote yesterday, and we've been uh, you know, collaborating with their board of directors. And uh, I think, that, I mean, Texas has always been one of the strongest state associations. And, you know, they've weathered the storm as, as good as anybody uh, in terms of COVID. And uh, they've, they've got some exciting things that they're working on and uh, going into next year. So real pleased to see what they're doing and they've got some new board leadership and uh sean nowak is coming on the board as a supplier representative and uh oh wow so yeah so where does he uh, find the time My I, God. that's what i asked him too but you know <laughs> he, he, he likes to give back and he does a good job at it and um oh, yeah yeah so I, I think that's good just in the sense that 
you know, he's one of the few vendors that I'm aware of that served on multiple state boards. So, because he served on Florida's board at one point, never served on Texas. So that'd be nice, and uh, it'd be very nice to see how they work and some of his stuff, and that'll be helpful for the foundation because uh, Texas is talking about some things for next year to integrate more in terms of support for the foundation as well. So. Wow, that's exciting. Why is Texas so strong? What are they doing right? Is it just the people? Yeah, I, I think I think they're just very passionate about the cause, and yeah. um, you know, it's one of the longest, you know, standing states with regulation, and so they've always been advocates for you know some type of standard. It's a big state, clearly. Yeah. But that, but they just have a very just a passion for the profession and, and, and they haven't lost that, you know, uh, and that, that's, that's the key. So I, I don't, you know, we can learn, I'll learn from them how they maintain that over the, over the course of time, but just how they interact with each other, the types of dialogue that you have in the classrooms and, the, you know, in the, in the, in the restaurants and the bars, it's mm-hmm. just, it's, it's more upbeat. Even if, even if they've got challenges, it's just, they're positive. You know, they're like, we can find a solution to anything. And that's, so that's, that's half the battle. Yeah. It is regulated in Texas. You're required to have, what, a CDT at every right. lab? Right. It's got registration. You have to employ at least one active CDT, full-time you know, personnel, mm-hmm. and then they still have the material and point-of-origin disclosure. Great. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you say it's been around one of the longest. Yeah. I mean, as far as the chronology, I mean, South Carolina was first. South Carolina actually was 1942. Ooh. Oh, my God. Um, so that long? Yeah, wow. So tex- tex- Texas has been, I think, over 60 years. So, wow. yeah. Well, I'm sure that helps keep the strength alive, but the people are just amazing. Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. And the people yeah. on the board, I don't know if it's always been that way because I've just kind of been introduced to them over the last couple of years, but they're very passionate and very active and constantly trying to get, you know, just awareness. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think part of the mentality I like about their board, just in the sense of, you know, we, we all, all of us that serve in those kind of roles, you know, it can kind of quickly kind of come to become about you and their, their philosophy is it's not about us. It's about the people who we represent. And, um, if you keep that kind of mentality, you're going to make good decisions. Yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. That's so cool. Well, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks and enjoy yes, the meeting yeah. and thanks for popping on and talking to us. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in one state where I can wear cowboy boots, and then uh, my next destination in Nashville, we can wear cowboy boots, too. So, yeah. so I get twice twice this year, I get to pull the boots out. Good for you. Awesome. All right. Bennett, we appreciate you, you, as always. All right. Thank take care, you. folks. Thanks. Thank take you. Care. All right. Bye. Hey, uh, Elvis. This is Keith again. Yes, sir. Hello. Okay. So... Uh, you know, it may be winding down a little bit. It's fine. Uh, yeah. It's trying to see uh, we're 1130. So I would probably say, I don't know, how much content? Do you have enough content? We always have enough content. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no worries, man. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I think, uh, I think maybe we ought to just go ahead and, because uh, we're getting uh, cut it off because we're getting ready to go into... Uh, the luncheon part yeah. of it, and then uh, the exhibitors are going to, we'll go to 2 o'clock. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think maybe if we're at a pretty good stopping point, this might be this might be a good time to do it. Cool. Well, real quick, Keith. Yeah, What about sure. you? How did you end up at Oregon? I want to get your story. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we need to hear from you. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, I moved down to Dallas in about 1984, I guess it was, 85, and I was actually uh, living in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Our family had a uh, construction supply company. Yeah. So my father had passed away and is a family-run business, and we we held on for a while. And then the, um, I guess the savings and loan bust hit about 1985 or somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. So it just wiped out a lot of new construction remodels. Everything just pretty much stopped. Yeah. So then my brother and I decided, well, you know, I, I know Dallas is booming. It's always booming. So I end up moving down here and going to work for another, I was an estimator at the time, so we did a lot of estimating on new construction remodels and sure, stuff like yeah. that. So anyway, um, long story short, the 
savings and loan bust hit Texas big. And the company I was working for, it basically was going out of business. Oh. So uh, then I decided, you know, I think I'm getting out of the construction phase. <laughs> Might be a and, good idea. Uh, into, into something medically oriented. I didn't care if it was selling horse pills or what, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I actually uh, worked a little bit for another supply company in the in the builder's hardware. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, same thing. I mean, it's trickle-down effect. So. Sure the time i told my wife i go you know i think i'm going to get into something medically oriented Mm -hmm. and uh so i entered an ad in the dallas morning news you know back then they didn't have internet so much so everything had to be on paper newspaper ads yeah yeah so i answered the newspaper ad i bet it wasn't a one inch square and it was for a sales rep southwest sales rep for a company and the company was uh, Horaeus Colzer. Oh, wow, yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So I started with Horaeus Colzer in 89. And honestly, I didn't know what a Bard Parker was. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, interesting so, you used that description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my first introduction was besides, uh, you know, just some training and going out to the company out in California and going through the company stuff, I had to. They gave me a bunch of information to study yeah. you know, and all that. But, yeah, I was at a at one of the meetings and uh, working behind the tables and all that stuff. And one of the guys, you know, was talking to this dentist. And, yeah, you take the Bard Parker and you do this to it and you do that and cut it and blah, blah, blah. Well, after the dentist left, I asked the, I asked the rep, I go, hey, uh, what's a Bard Parker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, that's cute. Uh, anyway, uh, and so that was in 1989. So, uh, you know, I've stayed with them for a while mm-hmm. and uh, we parted company and I was an independent with them for a while. And uh, then I got uh, one of the, one of the uh, labs down here in Dallas said, you know, you need to think about selling alloy selling gold and so uh i did some research and uh i uh, called up argon and made a trip out there and next thing you know uh you know i was selling argon alloy wow. and uh, so you know they were very gracious and basically i've almost i've been with them as an independent back in 90 about 92 and then uh I had another company here in Dallas called Intratech Dental Products that makes the uh, ProPress Pro 100, Pro 90. Oh, They're yeah. making the ProPress 100. Yeah, so familiar with them. We used to work for them and uh, selling Argon Alloy and a bunch of other products. And, of course, eventually they sold to Whitmix. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so in uh, basically 2004... I just made a decision. I'm going to call the company and see if I can go to work for them full time and just try to concentrate on, at the time, it was Argon Alloy and CapTech. That's it. Yeah. So I, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's what I did. I, I basically just started selling those two products and then went to work for, went to work for Argon full time 2004. It's been a really good ride of the transition between analog and digital has been just unbelievable and uh, it's been really fun and uh, it really enjoyed the business and got involved with the DLAT you know I don't know how many years ago I figured hey if I'm going to get in the business I might oh, yeah. well support the association yeah yep agree so I imagine when you came back to Oregon in what 2004 selling alloy and cab tech i imagine you don't sell much alloy and cab tech now <laughs> well don't really sell that much cap tech but uh, does anybody use cab tech oh uh, uh, some really they, they ordered a little bit <laughs> not, not much interesting not much. Yeah. but yeah. it's kind of interesting with the transition into digital there's still labs that are casting sure but uh there's a lot of labs that send out digital yeah in yep. the way of, of metal yeah you know either milled or printed or, you know, whatever. But uh, we're still doing surprisingly quite a bit. Really? Uh, Yeah. 
Yeah. Interesting. Of course, it's not as much as it used to be, but we're still pretty busy in the SLM department and the DPM yeah. and also the mill gold crowns. Nice. The labs love the mill gold crown. Oh, oh yeah. man, you guys get a ton of ours, so. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. But you mentioned yeah. that you were independent. Were you like yeah. contracted with companies? Is that is it different? Now? Yeah, I was an yeah an independent uh, dealer basically. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. So one time, you know, I had like Cavo. I sold sold Dental Stone, Denerica, Rent for Products, the ovens for Intratech. Then I went with started working with them full time. But we also maintain all of our customers that we could in different metals and yeah. things like that. So you just independently sold for multiple companies at the same time. Yes. Uh huh. Sure did. People still do uh, that. I think, I don't know if they do or not anymore. I really huh. don't know. Maybe, maybe there are a few independents out there, but I tried to get product lines that were non-competitive. Well, yeah. One would think that and, they would uh, want that too. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I've learned a lot. It's been fun working with the laboratories and, you know, I don't know, they're eager to teach if you're, if you're willing to learn. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? That's true. So it, it's been fun. I, I really enjoy it. And I, you know, I'm 69 this year. I mean, wow. I'm still, I love it. I don't know how long I'm going to go, but I'm, I'm just going to keep going. You know, I like the technology and it's great. Yeah. So you never sat at a bench? You never made anything? No. Uh, well, no, not to sell, let's yeah. say. But I did, you know, most people that get in this business are fairly handy doing something, sure. you know, with tools or whatever. And, and uh, you know, you can learn it if you want to. And oh, so yeah. I, I, I did. I had a number of different technicians. I knew how to use the product. Mm -hmm. I knew how the product worked. Yeah different products and so but don't ask me to sit down and sculpt a tooth <laughs> to make it look like a molar or something yeah. you know? <laughs> not no you know it, or an anterior it'd look like a horse tooth or something yeah. <laughs> the materials how to work with it you know how you're supposed to use it yes i can do all that stuff on a lot of different things sure. and, uh, but i'm not a dental technician no I call myself a CDT, a certified dental troublemaker. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like yeah. that. <laughs> anyway, that's, well, kind of my, that's kind of my story, I guess, on the how I got into the dental business. But. Well, Elvis and I appreciate you. You've made this Dental Texas Lab meeting for us amazing because you just kept the flow of techs and people and everybody coming in, and we so appreciate it. We talk about you all the time. My pleasure. I love to do this kind of stuff and, and uh, just communicate and just enjoy the everybody. And uh, got a couple of guys looking at me right now like, don't get me over here. Yeah. <laughs> you get used to that, it shows. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just have to drag them over and say, hey, it's a we're having a conversation here, you know. Yeah. I leave that up to Barb. <laughs> you do it great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Have a great meeting. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Keith. Thanks for everything. Well, yeah. Hopefully, we can uh, we can meet. I know y'all were here back a few years ago. Yeah, we'll get back. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that'll be awesome. And uh, we appreciate you guys and what you're doing for the industry and and just uh, y'all do a fantastic job and and uh, we just really appreciate it. Anything we can do, just let us know. If it wasn't for All you right. and it wasn't for Oregon, we wouldn't have had the conversations we've had today. Exactly. And that's exactly right. And so, it, hey, my pleasure. Yeah, it's our pleasure, sure. Awesome. We thank you. We'll talk to you later, Take Keith. care. Okay, see you later. Live, not live, right? Yeah. As, not live. <laughs> as not live as we can be. <laughs> yep. Okay, thank we'll you, see sir. you later. Yep. Take care. Bye. Bye. So a huge thanks to everyone that took the time to sit down at the Oregon booth and talk with us. That was actually a really great day, even though you and I were both home. Again, this year, I really enjoyed that meeting. We can only imagine how odd it is for someone to tell you to sit down and start talking to people you can't see through a computer. But now you know how we feel most of the time. Yeah. 
But now that we are months past when the DLAT happened, we can be sure that it's safe to go to these shows. And they are starting to pop up all over the calendar. We have the FDLA in June, where we will be recording live live from the pre booth. Then there's the Fun in the Sun and the Ladies of the Mill in July. So keep a lookout, guys. They're starting to come back. Well, you're going to be there? We hope so. And if you are, stop by our booth and talk to us. And you can be on our podcast. And if you don't, I'll probably be grabbing some of you. So it's that easy. You want to be the coolest person at the show? Head over to VoicesFromTheBench.com forward slash store and pick up a shirt or a hoodie to show off Voices From The Bench. And remember that 100% of the profits go towards Barb doing the triathlon for the foundation and a laboratory technology. You can also customize your shirt as you see fit. You can put your lab's logo on it, a funny dental saying, anything you want. So be creative. You're a dental technician. You know you love it. That's right. It all goes to Barb's (laughs) triathlon. (laughs) That's really not true, guys. Just saying. It all goes to a good cause. No matter where it goes, it all goes to the foundation. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. doing this for three years (laughs) i can't even believe i asked you that question